question going into this fight? Yeah, it was just um, to go out there and you know be be my best, man. I'm um, I'm incredibly athletic. That's what uh, I don't get to. Yeah, I think that's one of the most credit needs to go to to what I do in there is my ability just to 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 uh, adapt, you know, adapt to the circumstances. But my athletic ability, uh, you know, allows me to take these chances that that sometimes people would rather not. And uh, yeah, man, it was it was a fantastic night, and that's a huge compliment coming from you because you've watched, you've been right there for a lot of fights. I, I've been there for 23 years plus in the octagon, Justin. I've seen every great warrior there is. Um, I'm so excited to see what the future holds for you because you just you blow me away every time I see you, and then you come out. The way you go in, the way you take it to them, the way you do not let up. You did not give Edson a chance to recover. I have never seen Edson in that kind of trouble ever in any of his fights in the octagon where he was just trying to get everything back together uh, to get his game plan together. But there is such a thing as a true finisher in fighting, and that's what you displayed. You just give no chance not to take a breath. Now, you were ranked, I think it was number eight going into this fight, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, no, uh, you're probably real quick, Buffer. Number eight on the charts, but number one in everyone's hearts. Yeah, there you go. No, great way, to, great way to put it, TJ, because that's how we feel. I would suspect that's now what beating. I'm here for. That's what you are here for, my friend. So, can, can you know, I can I just like... say one thing, Justin, about your performance that I think is incredibly overlooked? Uh, a lot of people were talking about how Barboza has these ridiculous kicks and how maybe we need to see Justin Gaethje go back to his wrestling roots and whatnot. What do you do? You walk out in the middle of the octagon. And you buckle this dude's leg with a low kick to his lead leg. Like, I, I love the fact that people think, oh, you know, Gaethje needs to worry about these kicks. And what do you do? You, you launch a devastating leg kick of your own. Yeah, it was, man, I think that's what set the precedent for the entire fight right away. Uh, you know, I think it, it definitely threw him off. And then he went to go throw his kick, and I was going to, you know, I was going to check it. He had to pull it. And I think those two, the combination of things really, really had him thinking like, oh, shit, like, I'm, I, he's a warrior, man, but, uh, you know, we all got a certain amount of weight in us, and once we extend that, you know, I think it's going to be, it's going to, the next couple of times that it comes out, it's going to be difficult for him to go in there uh, with the same kind of fire that he's ever had before. You know, I'm because of those those late kicks that I did right away. I agree. I, I was watching, you know, on, on Saturday night on television and, and you know I, I'm sorry, I love to say that Bruce, maybe you have the best seat in the house, but really the best seat in the house is the one that's in your living room on your couch as long as you got a, a sizable television. But uh, you know, being able to look at Edson Barboza's face when he landed that kick, Justin, I, I felt like his body language, you know, basically said Wait, I'm supposed to be the one that does that. I'm supposed to be the one that lands a leg kick like that. What is this guy doing? And and I I think you're right, Justin. I don't think he ever really recovered and uh, was kind of taken out of the fight from the first you know few moments. Yeah, fighting is so uh, man. It's, once it starts, you know, every the anticipation for thing. We was up for eight or ten or twelve weeks. Uh, well, you know, while Bruce is sitting there on the microphone announcing it, we're just waiting and waiting and waiting. And then once it starts, man, there's there was so much stuff that happened in such a short amount of time, and man, I had him in trouble early, and I, I created so much damage in such a little bit of uh, a little amount of time that, uh, yeah, he was he was in he was in trouble early, man. And uh, I have the best coach, Trevor Whitman, and going back, I, I go back and watch you know the fights like frame by frame, literally like frame by frame, and, and I was I was great that night. And I really I can't uh, see I can't wait to see how good I, I think I could be. Uh, you know, just continue to on this progression. I love your attitude, Justin. I, I love that positive attitude, the way you're explaining yourself, and you're right in everything you're saying. One question I have relating to what TJ just mentioned, the leg kick you delivered to Barboza, was that part of your game plan coming out to say, hey, your legs are baseball bats, but let me show you what a baseball bat really feels like? Was that? Did you want to get him with that kick as yeah, fast as possible? I mean, I, uh, before the fight, there's there's many quotes. You know, my, my one quote that I kept saying was, I'm you know, I'm going to go out there and make my bones touch his bones, and we're going to see whose bones are harder. And, um, that's what I went out there and did. Oh, but it wasn't, I wasn't going to go out there. But if you look at if every single fight, I mean, look at the Eddie Alvarez fight, I landed a monster kick in the first, like, two or three seconds. So, yeah, I mean, like, you know, once that fight starts, you know, it's just like there's a clock. There's, there's a clock that's ticking, and, you know, five, five-minute rounds, three, five-minute rounds, 
it doesn't it seems like a long time but really there's uh, there's not a lot of time in there um and it adds up quick so yeah i mean i to get to get the ball rolling you know the first like three to five seconds is something that i really really enjoy and and once that happens once he felt that pressure i like knew you know he was more susceptible to, to stay in the pocket with me and have these exchanges and then uh, once i understood that i was hitting harder and that i did there was less things than i thought i needed to worry about in those exchanges i was able to you know 100 to commit to that and man it was it was something special and uh, again i can't wait to do it again um, what are the top three goals for your, your UFC career? Obviously, I know one of them is to put gold around your waist, but what are your top three goals for the next two years in the UFC? Where do you see yourself and what do you want to be? Yeah, I mean, I really, um, now that I've created kind of this, you know, again, a fan favorite, I, I mean, I'm here to, you know, I'm here to make a living and to make sure that I have a sustainable living when this is done. So those are the, those, you know, that takes up the top two at least. Um, things that uh, that I'm here to accomplish, you know. Um, the, I, I I have a, a human services that a degree in, in human services. I want to do social work. So the bigger this platform I gain, you know, the more influence that I'll be able to have. And so that's number one for me. And then number two is financial, you know, stability uh, through this. And then number three has to be to prove that my coach is the best in the world. Uh, and that's Trevor Whitman. I'm going to prove. You know, he has one right now with with Rose Nama Unit. Secondly, uh, you know, I'll be the, I'll be uh, his 26 or 27 overall, but uh, second, you know, UFC champion for now. It's very interesting, social worker, and I love how you threw in on the third note your coach Trevor, right? He does a great job. That shows great respect of you to your coach. Has the UFC since uh, Saturday night, or has anybody even commented, or do you have any idea 